There we go. Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy uh, with Crank again, bringing you the world's best of metal worldwide. And today I'm having a chat with Frank from Strike Master, one of Mexico's best thrash metal bands, hands down. I had a chat with Frank through email last year um, over the Death Based Illusions EP, which was a killer EP, man. Really enjoyed the hell out of it. And that signal, man, the Cosmic Hour Ritual was a really great song. Uh, cheers for joining me, man. This one here. That one right Thank there, bro. Greetings all the way from Mexico City to Australia. Yeah. Down this, under the world. This is really, really cool, man. This is like, um, I wanted something I want to do, man, because I'd done a written with one with you last time, and I was a bit excited about doing something like this because I've been playing around with this medium a little bit. Um, but for the uninitiated dude and the people that didn't get a chance to um, read that one, can you just tell us a little bit about who Strike Master are? Well, Strike Master, we were a trash metal band since 2006. We've done about five full-length albums, a couple of EPs, a couple of demos. And we played uh, across 14 countries approximately in, in these years of history. And uh, we're currently working on a new new full length. We don't know when we're going to release it because the whole world is shut down now. So it's all about composition and just standing by for the proper moment. Yeah, well, that's that's the key, man. How are things going over there at the moment? I suppose you are all locked down at home and you've probably just been sitting around playing the guitar. That's all I do, my friend. It's all about watching TV, <laughs> using the computer, playing the guitar, and this is the merchandise I'm selling, you know? On envelopes, every Monday I go to the post office, but other than that, there's nothing else to do because everything is closed. It's not like a quarantine, but it's a voluntary lockdown. Yeah, just the uh, supermarkets, grocery stores. Yeah, they're open, but uh, no events, no bars, no concerts, no. On no entertainment, everything's closed. See the world. Yeah, well, it seems like the safe thing to do at the moment, dude. And it's probably wise you you hold off a little bit on bringing out you know new music at least to wait and see what happens because you bring out some really amazing music dude and you'd want to kind of give it that good airplay because you guys have put on a really really great show well as long as you're a musician i think you're never gonna get bored since uh, music is just eternal it's progressive and there's something always to do so I've been working on new songs. I have been finishing the lyrics for it as well. And I we already have like about five songs ready to go. So let's work in another four maybe to have a decent full length album. That's the way. And uh, we're going to start meeting uh, next month. Maybe we're going to start rehearsing together again. So that's that's the plan so far. Yep. Can I ask how you first started like getting into music um, in particular? When did, how did you pick up guitar? What was the story behind that? We kind of touched on that a little bit, um, but we didn't kind of delve into how the story behind it. Can you tell us that? Well, in my family, at least there was uh, music the whole time. So uh, my mother, she was a ballet dancer. So there was kind of a scenario theater and music all the way in, but in kind of 1997, 1998, it's when I first listened to Metallica. And then they came to Mexico City in 1999, I remember with Pantera, and that was my first concert. So my first figure out of a musician I would admire was James Hetfield. Then I, I started listening to Pantera after I saw him playing live. And uh, next one, it was Phil Anselmo. That's why I got into guitar and vocals, both. Yeah. Yeah, Pantera, man, that Metallica era. I seen Metallica. I think that was like my first concert in 1998. And I was the same. I was like, man, Metallica. And I've seen him, managed to see him three times since. And um, Unreal Band, dude, live. That's really cool. And Pantera, dude, that would have been a killer show to get to. Yeah, 70,000 people. Wow. Mexico City. Wow, Yeah, man. the place turned crazy. You, you can imagine when they played Domination, all the chairs were flying. I was just 11 years old, but that very night, my life was changed for good. 
yeah. 22 years ago. To the good side, mate. To the metal side, that's for sure. To the metal side. <laughs> next day, uh, next Monday at school, I was not the same anymore. I was not a kid anymore. <laughs> <I was>, Try <laughs> to get for all your black t-shirts and everything like that. I was, I was kind of a small Phil Anselmo, you know. Yeah, it, it seems like a really cool, tight scene in Mexico. Like, what was it like growing up as a metalhead from from eleven, dude? From well, uh, about being a metalhead in Mexico. Yeah, man. There was a lot to start uh, researching about what was history of metal. Uh, how were the old times? So started talking to those older than me, who who got to see those concerts back in 1991, 1992, when Sodom Creator, uh, Slayer, Sepultura came to Mexico in 1992 with their best albums, you know? So uh, there was kind of a big space between those bands and when I started to be a metalhead. So yeah. it was like a lot of investigation to do about what was the metal music. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about how you guys um, formed as friends. Can you tell us a little bit about how, what, what was the initial drive behind um, getting Strike Master up and going? I, that's about when I was like 16, 17 years old, when I met these guys who also played instruments. So I presented the idea about making trash metal band, 2005, maybe 2004. So that's when the project started. I already had some songs written, such as Trashing the Blind School, Merciless Machine. Those were already written since I was 15 years old, maybe. So they were just waiting to be played. That's how it started rolling, like an avalanche. Yeah, and what was your first gig like? When did you have your first gig? Do you remember that? Uh, it was... Uh, <laughs> it was good because we were... Uh, there was a band who was supposed to play, they didn't play it, and they got us instead of them. And we were so hungry to play, to show the people how we were doing. So we were just a new band with three songs maybe yep. it was a uh, really quick just uh, another gig but uh it was our first one it was november 2005 maybe yeah and so did you just play the three songs or did you throw in a few covers yeah mirthless machine trashing the blind school and maybe street criminals i don't know which one was the third but it was a very representative night for us yep. people had a lot of fun they liked strike master and they were wondering who the hell we were because we uh we were not even announced in the flyer. Yep. There was this band called Satan Axe, and they didn't want to play, so we got called Strike Master instead of Satan Axe. Yep. Yeah. That was that would have been a buzz, man, and to see your career like kind of roll along, especially with your live performances, because I've watched a fair few of your live videos over there on YouTube, which I'll put a few links up for some of these videos so everyone can check them out, man. You put on a great show. How many countries? You're saying 13 countries, dude. What countries have you played over there, man? We've been uh, all over America. I could yeah. say it's Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Guatemala, wow. Salvador, Puerto Rico, all over Mexico, 32 states of Mexico. USA, we've been in LA, we've been in Chicago, in Dallas, New York, Milwaukee. Yeah. And we've been in Germany. Uh, Keep It True Festival, we've been in Berlin, Munich as well, and we went to Belgium. Yeah, awesome. That was back in the day, so we're waiting to new calls to go different countries. We've been visiting, obviously, the USA, Colombia, yep. Guatemala. Those are the ones we've visited more often. Yep. What would be your biggest highlight playing live? Have you got a, a, your, a big highlight at all? And the biggest one we've played? Oh, your biggest, best memory. Your best memory, sorry. Uh, biggest highlight. Yeah, I got it. Uh, I think I got two because I yeah. cannot mention one without Please mentioning tell the other Please. one. It was, uh, I think, the, the first big highlight we had. It was uh, Strike Master. It was uh, King Diamond, Exodus, and Strike Master in Sports Palace, Mexico City. That, that was a very important one for us, you know, to be playing with the king. Yeah. And uh, one year after that, we played at Slayer's final tour. It was about Slayer, Anthrax, Phil Anselmo, and Strike Master main stage in front of 40,000 people. 
nearby the pyramids in Mexico. So it was final tour, final slayer, last chance to play just once with them. I'm very grateful it happened. That would have been a couple of points through this. That would have been a massive highlight for you, considering you've seen Pantera with Metallica and your sound is definitely influenced by Slayer. I know that because we've talked before. That would have been a massive, massive, massive buzz for you and a really, really cool highlight. I remember when I went back home that night, it was about 3 a.m. I couldn't sleep. I was with my eyes wide open, just asking myself if that really happened. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. because it was kind of a if you would tell me I was going to play with Slayer uh, Anthrax and Phil and Selma in one evening when I was kind of 15 years old I would not believe that Yep. so it just happened and I, I'm very grateful it happened exactly and it shows the caliber of the talent that you, you guys have I know over here in Australia sometimes we're a little bit isolated from the rest of the world and it's hard to kind of dig in the underground scene but when you say you played with Salaya on this final tour and you check out your back catalogue man using an extremely talented band you know it, it must be you know good to have that recognition as well it was just about to go up and play since we have been so influenced by those bands we're just a mixture out of them we are the legacy they are bringing to the world so Total confidence, just turn up the amplifiers and blast the hell out of people. That's what we did. There's a couple videos around. Yeah, and I bet you scored quite a lot of fans out of that performance too. They yeah. would have gone home and gone, yeah, many stock master. People, many people first saw us in that very concert. We were known because, you know, festival can allow like 40,000 people, but it's not supposed they are going to watch Strike Master. They're going to watch Slayer. So that way, eyes were on us, and it was a proper moment to give the shot. It was one shot at glory, like Judas Priest would say. Yeah, and, and, and you know, that's it. You go into a show, and um, if I love going into a show and checking out the support acts, I try and get to a show I go from the start and I go to the end, specifically to see bands like yourself playing these support slots and then going, wow, walking away, that's really cool. That's what a festival is about. It's just about to have fun. Yep. Walk around, check the bands, drink beer. Uh, it's great to see you boys are still like getting a lot of tons of support as well. And as you said, you got a whole heap of merch behind you as well. Where's the best place people can get along and support you merch wise? They can contact us through Strike Master Facebook, StrikeMaster.net as well. We have a online web shop and we we do the shipping. Yeah. Every Monday we go to post office. There's a shirt inside. Yeah. So next Monday we're going to go get there and send the packages all over the world. We send all over Mexico. We've sent to Japan, to Thailand, USA, whatever is needed, we can send it. Yeah, that's the go, dude. It's really good to see that support. And that's what it's all about getting amongst the scene and supporting the scene and keeping bands strong as you were saying about slayer um did you get a chance to meet them all not at all oh what <laughs> no 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 it's it's quite different when you're backstage there's uh, there was a lot of security yeah. especially for them so i just went out and enjoyed the concert yeah from the fan view yeah that that would have been really cool just having that buzz playing on the stage you know but it would have been even better if slayer had come down and meet you too or you could be able to get up and meet them that would have just topped it off i think i they are a huge band they have their moment they they need their space yeah you wouldn't have been able to sleep for three days after that so at least you know you got some sleep that night i was not even (laughs) able to sleep but that's a moment to be professional just to be a band playing not to be just a fan yeah i'm a diehard fan but anyways i was supposed to play and i played then i went to the to the press meeting Yep, and then I went to enjoy the concert. That's it. That's the go. Get in amongst it, enjoy it as a fan in the pit with the fellow fans, man. And it was raining as hell when Slayer played. Yeah, so it was kind of rainfall all over our heads, singing "Raining Blood." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Slayer three times, man, as well, and I think they called it at the right time as well. I love Slayer. I'm a massive diehard fan. I think they're just. The right time, man. They put such a great career together, and I think it was the perfect time for her to call it a day, spend some time with family and downtime. Yeah, I got to see them with Jeff Hanneman back in 2003. Oh, 
So yeah. that I was privileged that yeah. way to see him with that lineup. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, so, so what's next? The album? What thrash metal are you cranking as well, dude? What do you got cranking? At oh yes, yeah. it's we're not in a rush to release an album since we we just released the Death Base Illusions. Illusions. That was our we released 2019, 2019 and 2020. Yeah, we buy singles, you know, each song at a time with a video. So yep. uh, there's no rush to release. There is a little need to compose to have it ready for when the moment comes. But now the world is all is under lockdown. It's in standing by. So before we we release an album, we want to make some position for it. Yep, yep. Talk with some small record labels to give some licenses to make spread the word as much as we can when we're ready. Yeah, man. Well, I'm hoping a few um, guys down here in Australia check you guys out. I got, a, I know I have a few mates on Facebook already that are following you guys. I've got some mad thrash metal fans, dude. Uh, what thrash metal are you cranking at the moment, dude? What bands are you getting into over there? Mm, the music I've been listening lately, uh, I like a lot Demolition Hammer. They're one of my favorites as well. Yeah. And... Uh, I've been listening lately to Paradise Lost as well. Yeah, that new album. I was listening to Draconian Times, 995. Ah, cool. I, I still haven't had a chance to listen to that Paradise Lost album. I've been pretty well neck deep it's in a, the underground scene. I've been listening as well uh, a lot of Swedish death metal, uh, such as Grave. Grave are my favorite Swedish death metal band. Yeah, death metal is cranking, dude. Have you had a chance to check out the Abramelin album from Australia, dude? They just brought out a massively cool death metal album, eh? I've been never enough snuff. Um, great album, dude. I know um, a guy, uh, Dizzy Dyson's been promoting promoting it a fair bit, and he's pretty chuffed with it as well. I noticed a photo with you actually with him from a memory a few years ago. Uh, Dizzy Dyson from over here in Australia. Um, the Bremlin one, man, definitely one worth checking out if you're into your death metal, man. I'll have to send you a link for that one. All right. Yeah, I listen uh, as well, heavy metal, death metal, thrash metal, whatever it comes. Yeah, the music man. Music is, is so extensive, so I give a proper time a day to be listening to other bands than to play my own guitar. Yeah, That's yeah. Where it and chill. It's it's the thrash metal scene is crazy at the moment. I don't, you know, I know. Over your way in South America, I've seen so many, so many good thrash metal bands. It's the same here in Australia. Uh, how do you feel about the resurgence of thrash metal? It's pretty good to see, eh? That benefits us a lot, and uh, we had to keep it going. So thrash metal has to to keep alive. Yep. That's our responsibility now. The new wave has to keep it alive. I like a lot of Australian bands, you know. Uh, one of my favorite bands of all time is Destroyer 666. Yeah. Since I was kind of 14 years old, I got the Phoenix Rising album. Uh, I also got the Cold Steel for an Iron Age. I also like Hobbs Angel of Death, Peter Hobbs. May he yep. rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. That's and amazing. There's also this, this Chilean band living in Australia called Dark Order. I like them a lot. Yeah, yeah, man. The thrash scene is blowing up. There's so many great thrash bands. Um, Truth Corroded, the legendary thrash band from Australia. If you haven't heard of Truth, check them out. They're just amazing. Their last album, Bloodlands, is great. Uh, we got Hidden Intent. Uh, there's uh, In Malice's Wake. It's, um, dude, you'd, you'd, I reckon you should love it over here in Australia as well. Get Strike Master over here for a big thrash metal run. And you should love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, there's metal all over the world. And bad thing is we're way too far away. Yeah, yeah, man, that's it. Uh, awesome, dude. We're going to sign out there, man. But before I do, would you like to say any last words or thank yous or shout outs to anyone? Of course. Thanks to you for making the interview. Uh, to everyone out there who would like to reach Strike Master, they can just go. message you guys want to send we're 24 hours here so we can respond to any questions send you any link or we can also 
Awesome. Frank, Strike Master, absolute legend, man. Horns up all the way from Australia. Cheers, mate. Uh, uh, thanks, brother. Take it easy.